Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different from what I normally do with discussion videos. We're going to be doing a tier list video now. For all of you who know me well, you know that music is one of my favorite parts of video games, and the Pokemon franchise has some of the best soundtracks overall of any video game franchise on the planet, at least in my opinion. So with that being said, we're going to do a tier list video today discussing the best soundtracks of all the mainline Pokemon games. Let's jump right into things. So with that being said, we're going to start and we're going to work our way up generation to generation until we get to the most recent as my earbuds fall onto the ground. So let's start with generation one, red and blue. It is a classic soundtrack. Some of the most iconic themes in Pokemon history come from this soundtrack right here, red, blue and yellow. Some of the most iconic route themes are from this soundtrack. Some of the most ambient city themes are from this soundtrack. I would put it in S tier if you didn't have a lot of repeats and listen. It's the first generation, it's the first soundtrack, it's the first music of the Pokemon franchise. It's iconic for that sense, so you would assume you drop it into S tier, but a lot of it is reused. There's a lot of towns and cities where the music gets reused. There's a lot of routes where the music isn't particularly different. It's the same tracks used over and over again where you could have some more iconic route themes. And I'm going to hold the sound quality of it to its uh, detriment a little bit. Some of the Game Boy soundtracks have not aged the best. We have better versions of a lot of these themes now. And for all of those reasons, I'm going to be throwing it into A tier, not S tier, but it's still it's iconic. It's what started the franchise, so it deserves to be up pretty high. Now, the next one, of course, is Gold and Silver, which we have right here. And by the way, we're going to do remakes within the generations at which they came out. So Heart Gold and Soul Silver will be going after Diamond, Pearl and Platinum and so on and so forth. Root Gold and Silver, A tier. Gold and Silver is some of the most iconic music in the Pokemon franchise. Johto has some of, if not the best, city themes in all of Pokemon. Some of the ones that come to mind are Azalea Town, uh, Violet City, Newbark Town. They have some of the most iconic themes. They have and really capitalized on some of the best themes from Red and Blue and really turned them on their head. Specifically, the Champion theme in Gold and Silver is fantastic, and the use of giving Red the champion theme once you eventually meet him in Mount Silver is also great. Again, I hold it back because it's Game Boy Color music, and because unlike with a lot of future soundtracks, there isn't a ton of differentiation. The battle themes are good. I like the Johto battle theme. I think the Johto battle theme is done better in a later game. Uh, it's not my favorite. Johto and Kanto, for those of you who know me well and have watched the channel for long enough, know they're not my favorite generations of Pokemon. Uh, Johto has, it's grown on me over the years. Kanto has waned on me. It, it's just not, it doesn't have a lot of flavor. It doesn't have a lot of pizzazz like some of the newer games do. For that reason, I keep them both at A. They're still great. You're going to see a lot of A's on this tier list. Not a ton of hot takes here, but I also put gold and silver and crystal is included here in A tier. Next up, we have Ruby and Sapphire. Ruby and Sapphire for me is S tier. Not only was Emerald my first Pokemon game, but Ruby and Sapphire have some of, if not the best battle themes in Pokemon. Add in the meme of the trumpets, which make most of their tracks fantastic. You have a ton of great themes. Not only do you have a great champion battle theme, you have a great rival battle theme. You have a great uh, random trainer battle theme. You have fantastic gym leader themes, which I believe is also shared with the Elite Four. There's so many good tracks. The Team Aqua and Magma battle theme is great with the grunts. And then the slight differentiation when you get to the boss battle theme is also great. The Game Boy Advance music, I think, and this is just personal preference, unlike the Game Boy music has aged a lot better. It sounds a lot crisper. It sounds, it's it's got that retro feel that the Game Boy music has, but I almost feel as if because it's just slightly more modern now that we're into the early 2000s with ruby and sapphire and eventually we'll get to fire and leaf green i think the music has helped and the quality of that music has stayed the same there's some great town tracks as well in ruby and sapphire uh fall arbor town is a is such an underrated track the route leading up to fall arbor town as well as meteor falls all really good rustboro city is it's the first time we hear at least what i would define as like an iconic cityscape theme and that is Rustboro, and Rustboro was shared with one or two other locations. I want other two, one or two other towns 
in the uh, in the uh, Johto, not the Johto, the Hoenn region. So for that, I think it's really good as well. Little Root Town, great classic track. Some of the route themes also are really good with those trumpets. The water themes, this is the first time that I think we get a really good surfing theme in Ruby and Sapphire. For that reason, I put it at S tier. Next up, Fire Red and Leaf Green. I don't have a ton more to say about Fire Red and Leaf Green, except that I'm going to place it in A tier. They didn't do a ton new with this soundtrack. They basically just recreated the themes from blue and red version and brought them into Fire Red and Leaf Green. They didn't do a ton different. The music still sounds good. It's still iconic. It doesn't get dinged for that Game Boy sound font that we have for these two games, but it's an A tier. It's not my favorite soundtrack, but it's a great iconic soundtrack in and of itself. We are done with Generation 3, but we are not yet in Generation 4 because now we have Colosseum and XD Gale of Darkness. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier. I consider these games to be mainline Pokemon games in my headcanon, mainly because you can transfer Pokemon between them and the lore of the games matches up. Colosseum and XD, if I had to take a map of the Pokemon world and basically place regions, I would put the Ore region in with the rest of these regions, with the Sinnohs and the Johtos, the Hoenns, the Kaloses, all of those things. I'd put them in there. So Colosseum and XD Gale of Darkness, both iconic tracks. There is a bit of difference here. Some of the more iconic themes, Fenac City is fantastic. The grunt battle themes with Cypher are also really good. XD Gale of Darkness has a great final boss theme and Lugia's theme, Shadow Lugia is also great. Agate Village is a hidden gem. I'm gonna be splashing in a ton of music from all of these games as we discuss them in this video. Agate Village is fantastic. It's great in both of them. These get a little dinged only because there's a ton of repeats. The Ori region has not changed much when we get to XD Gale of Darkness as opposed to in Colosseum. A lot of the music is the same. XD builds upon Colosseum and I think XD eventually becomes the better product. We're gonna put Colosseum at C. Keep in mind though, a lot of these are very close. XD is a B tier, Colosseum is C tier. XD improves dramatically on most of the things we get from Colosseum. And even though there are a couple battle themes and various other tracks that we get in Colosseum that we don't get in XD, XD has some cool ones too. The wild battle theme in XD, which does not exist in Colosseum because in Colosseum you there are zero random encounters, but in XD, there's a feature where you can find random encounters. So that's why I put XD in B and Colosseum in C, even though there is a lot of overlap. If there was a middle tier between B and C, but I'm not gonna, that's just, you get into the details, you get into the weeds. I would put Colosseum there, but for the sake of this video, Colosseum goes C, XD goes B. We're done with all the Gen 3 stuff now. We can move into Generation 4, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, my favorite region, my favorite uh, story arc, my favorite boss theme. Cyrus's battle theme is fantastic. Cynthia's champion battle theme is fantastic. This is basically me gushing about a lot of it. One of the things that Diamond and Pearl does really well, and it emphasizes an instrument really well uh, compared to other regions is in Gen 3, you had the trumpets and that was the iconic, uh, the iconic instrument of the region. Diamond and Pearl is the piano. The piano was used to brilliantly highlight a lot of themes in towns and cities and also some battle themes. Some of the more iconic ones include Candelave City, uh, uh, Pewter, not Pewter City, oh my god, Orberg City. Some of the Eterna City is utterly fantastic. Diamond and Pearl goes S tier for one reason though. It would go A tier if not for how many different route themes it has. There are so many different iconic route themes. This is the region that when you tell me to think of the music of the Sinnoh region, I think of the route themes. It's if, Di if Red and Blue had more varied route themes like Diamond and Pearl does, it would be an S tier. For that reason alone, it gets S tier. If you remove the route themes, it's, a, it's an A tier. But because of those route themes, it's an S tier. It is a fantastic soundtrack. And Platinum is included here too. So there are a couple Platinum exclusive tracks that I would include here. Another iconic theme from Generation 4 is the Tower Tycoon theme, Barry's Dad. Such a great track. Such an exciting, energetic battle theme. It is second to none. It's one of the best battle themes in all of Pokemon. One of the most exciting, happy, pleasant battle themes. And for that reason, it goes in S tier. Next up, Heart Gold, Soul Silver. They improve upon almost everything from Gold and Silver, and they introduce new tracks. They also have up battle themes for legendary Pokemon from previous regions. So for example, you get the Groudon and Kyogre battle theme in this, you get a Mewtwo battle theme in this. 
it is eons better than the original gold and silver and the chipset is upgraded so on the ds the music is great the music still holds up today i use it in videos today it's great it goes in s tier it's also a better soundtrack i think gold and silver is the better soundtrack of gens one and two so when you're looking at their remakes i would throw heart gold and soul silver above fire red and leaf green next up we're still in gen 4 battle revolution this is going to be a b tier game some of the battle themes are great waterfall coliseum is fantastic um main street or central street it's like basically like a cityscape um arena that you can battle in is great this game i consider canon and kind of like main line quote unquote just as i include xd and coliseum because you can transfer pokemon there's a mag mortar and an electivire that i believe you can transfer from these games that you can get once you complete the games so that's why i consider it canon it has that connectivity with the main games so for that reason it's on the li this list and because it's just battle themes it's battle themes and it's lobby themes the lobby themes are pretty good uh, when you're selecting what you want to do in the game, it's quite good. So that's why it goes in B. It's a good, it's a very good soundtrack. It just doesn't have a ton to it. We're finally out of Gen 4, and we're going to move to Black and White and Black and White 2. This is where there could be a little controversy. I'm going to throw back Black and White as a B tier soundtrack, and I'm going to throw Black and White 2 as an A tier soundtrack. The reason I do this is because a lot of the same themes exist among both games, except I think Black and White 2 perfects a lot of the themes. I'll give you an example. The Team Plasma theme in Black and White is quite good. I think they improve it in Black and White 2. And that's why, that's one of the reasons why I put it a tier above. That's one reason why I would put Black and White 2 above Black and White. The other reason is the Pokemon World Tournament. It's a feature that we do not, unless I'm crazy, I'm right now. It's a feature we do not have in Black and White. In, the, in Black and White 2, you get the Pokemon World Tournament, and it reintroduces a ton of battle themes of gym leaders and champions from previous Pokemon games, but they're brought up into the, uh, the sound font style of Black and White 2. It's amazing. So many great tracks in this, so many great remixed tracks. It's utterly fantastic. The route themes is also a standout here from Black and White 2. Um, and black and white as well. Route 10 is one of the most iconic route tra themes in all of Pokemon. Nuvema Town in black and white is great. Aspersia City, your starting town in black and white too, I think is the superior starting town theme. Aspersia City also is probably, uh, yeah, I'd say it definitely is my favorite uh, starting town theme in all of Pokemon. The uh, X and Y one is close. What is that? Anvil Town, no, that's in, that's in black and white. Vanaville Town, Vanaville Town in X and Y is also up there. They're really good. Black and White 2, though, edges it out because of the improvements to some of the battle themes from the original to then, the inclusion of more battle themes, and also the inclusion of more areas. Aspersia City, that whole left, uh, left western side of the Unova region that we don't have access to in Black and White that doesn't exist is here in Black and White 2. It's great. That's why I put them where I put them. That's it for Gen 5. There's really nothing else. Uh, we're going to move right into Gen 6, and we're going to have two games to talk about here. First is X and Y. X and Y is another A-tier soundtrack for me. X and Y I don't think gets enough credit, and it barely makes the A-tier. I'll put it at that. There's a lot of just fantastic uh, themes in X and Y. A ton of really good town themes, a ton of really good battle themes. There's a ton of really good key art, as I would put them, themes. It's little short tracks that are only eight or nine seconds long, and they overall make the soundtrack better. The evolution theme is really solid in X and Y, as an example. Uh, the theme when you're riding on a go-goat, or is it a skidoo? There's a little, a little jingle that plays when you're riding on the back of a skidoo. Uh, at one point in the game, that's really solid. Some of the cutscene tracks, specifically the ones when we learn about um, the war that happened 3,000 years ago, a lot of that emotional music, we get all of that from X and Y, some of the more iconic tracks. That's a similar thing to what Black and White and Black and White 2 do really well with N, specifically Black and White and its uh, ending credits theme and ends goodbye. That's really solid too. They take that and flip it on its head in X and Y. The emotional stuff you get with AZ and AZ's Floet, utterly fantastic. So for that reason, it goes into A tier. Next up, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I throw them in S tier along with Ruby and Sapphire. The addition of new tracks for things like Soaring, the re-inclusion of old legendary themes from the Hoopa Ring feature. These are things that are added on top of Omega Ruby, and, uh, on top of what was already existing 
in ruby and sapphire and you get it in droves here it's great it goes in s tier there's not a lot of problems they didn't do anything bad with the old tracks the new tracks are modernized for the 3ds in a great way it's overall really solid then of course we're getting into some weirder ones here sun and moon is b uh and i'm gonna throw ultra sun and ultra moon also in b there are some great tracks there's just not a ton of iconic tracks for me sun and moon and ultra sun and ultra moon have bopping is the best way i could put them battle themes they don't have a ton of good town themes at least from my perspective there's a couple that stand out seafolk village day and night is really good mali city day and night is really good but there's just a lacking of good town themes and a lack of good root themes at least from my taste so for that reason both of them go in b then we're going to move to the more recent stuff let's go pikachu and eevee i mean they're fine they didn't do a ton to improve upon uh what we came before them they're fine they're good if i'm staying true to my internal logic on this list I think I should move them into A tier because there's nothing to the detriment of what was originally there in red and blue. They didn't take any tracks and make them worse. So I think I'm going to keep them in A with the rest of it, but they just sound really good. They're very orchestral, and that's something we don't see for a lot of this list. Orchestral music is not very frequent in Pokemon. It's frequent in some of the side games, but for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, they really went for an, an orchestral feel. I think that's really good. So for that reason, I put it in A just above B. Sword and Shield, fantastic soundtrack. The battle themes are amazing. The town themes are all varied and really interesting. The wild battle theme is really exciting. The Dynamax theme and then the change they made to the Dynamax theme when you encounter a legendary in the Crown Tundra is also really good. On top of that, encounter themes for players are really good and they do a great job of introducing more elements that aren't exactly quote unquote musical into it. Footsteps um, and Pokemon cries, movements of the body, uh, technology, things like that are all really melded well in. So for that reason, I put this in S tier. They also have some really great hidden gems. For example, Leon's encounter theme is really good. The buildup and the the addition of clapping and audience interaction in the gym and as and as you get further into a gym battle, the way the audience gets into it is something that a lot of these older games don't have and they do a great job. With that being said, this is my list. There are no D tier mainline Pokemon games. There are no F tier mainline Pokemon games. Coliseum is the closest to a D. It's a C. I would love for you guys to take this list as well and show me what your list would be and tweet me to them. My Twitter is right here at LinkyYT. You can follow me there. I will post a link to this tier maker in the description. I want you to do it for yourselves. And if you guys like this kind of content, please be sure to let me know because there's a ton of other tier lists that I would love to do talking about various things in the Pokemon world. And we can go as in-depth as you guys want. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this tier list video. Hope you want to see more. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that red button down below. It does a ton to support me and show that you want to see more content like that. With that being said, I've been Linky. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.